some bluegrass. And I'm waiting for my own demographic, bluegrass soul. <laughs> Amen. It's not so much the style, it's the message. I spent some time with someone the other day, and all they wanted to play was blues. I want to break their fingers. Pull the knobs off their radio. I want something with a good message. Amen. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. Amen. I don't want to take a don't take a lot of time, um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge a couple of my children are here today. I'm so glad Mariah Caban is with us today. And uh, her brother, Christian, Christian, I thought your last name was Baird. It looks like it was Beard. He looks good, doesn't he? He's, he may have a beard, but he's still one of my babies. And so we love our children, don't we? Don't we? And I just want you to know, as a pastor, your children have become my children. And one of our children had a birthday this week. I'm so glad that Brooklyn had a birthday. She turned 21. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And the best year you ever had. People around here don't pay me to sing. They pay me not to sing. She did not give me enough money. Amen. And before I forget, so glad to see my friend Frank Brown was with me. Isn't it good to see Frank in the house of the Lord? Amen. I read an article this week written by Harvard Law Professor Dr. Simon Greenleaf. His quote was, according to the laws of legal evidence used in our court of law today, there is more evidence for the historical fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ than for just about any other event in recorded history. This was not a preacher. This was not a theologian. This was not a doctor of theology. This is a secular professor of law and history. Can I give you a word today? Some people take just on the surface that man went to the moon. I grew up in a town where NASA was prevalent. But do we really know that man went to the moon? I think the evidence would indicate that it happened. But I want you to know, people can believe that man went to the moon, but they have a hard time that God came to earth. I'm going to tell you today, there is many, many infallible evidences that Jesus Christ existed. Can I tell you this? If you're in the house of the Lord today, you're in good company because Christianity, even though it's under vile persecution on our globe, it is still the largest, longest standing, recognized religion on the face of the earth. You're not by yourself. That's what the enemy wants to tell you. You are by yourself. You are not by yourself. For his word says, I am with you even until the ends of the earth, the ends of the age. Amen. If you got your Bibles, I gave you a little break. I'm sorry for my family. They lost the memo about letting you be seated today. They just kept standing up, and I kept feeling sorry for you. But why don't you stand one more time? You won't have to go to the gym this afternoon. You will be well exercised. Brother Brian is right. Please come back tonight, casual. Come expecting great things. We want to we wanna bless your children and give them a great, great experience. Go to John's Gospel, chapter 1. I'm cognizant of the time. I promise that if you have a roast on, it will not burn today. John, chapter 1, going to read three verses. Look at verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold! The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Look at verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples, 
and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Maybe through repetition today, you have a revelation of our subject, and that is, Behold the Lamb of God. Why don't you put your Bibles in your seat? Why don't you stretch out of your comfort zone and lift your hands? That, that's an indication that you are receptive hearing from heaven. Then say, Jesus, today, God, here I am. God, if I am in vanities, expose it. But today, if you're in this place and you're still speaking to humanity, come by here and speak to me. God, I need a word of direction and encouragement. I find myself in distresses and despair. I'm at a crossroads in my life, and I'm not sure which way to go. Lord, speak a word that I may hear and know what your will for my life is. And we pray in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise today as you are seated. Why a lamb? Why indeed a lamb? There were many titles given to Jesus. Some called him son of God. Others called him son of man. Some perceived he was the Messiah. Others acknowledged him as a rabbi or teacher. Some thought he was just a learned man and called him master. Others believed he was the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant where there was a promise of a redeemer, so they called him son of David. Others didn't consider him at all and said, Is this not the carpenter's son? But John, cousin of Jesus, who was anointed as a forerunner, one to go before and make straight and declare and exclaim. You might consider him somewhat of the barker at a carnival that stands in the midway and say, on this side we've got this, and on this side they're directing you on what's up and coming. I'm here today to tell you that John, who was the forerunner, who was supposed to tell humanity what was coming, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, even, even, not just a lamb, but the Lamb of of God. Today, it is not a coincidence that the Messiah, the Master, the Son of God, the Son of David was considered a lamb. If you look at the attributes of a lamb, they are so innocent. Who likes my little people down here today? A little wham. Aren't they sweet? Somebody said, if you're talking about the Lamb of God, why did you have two? Let me make a, a note to you that I just learned recently that when sheep bear lamb, they almost always bear twins. Can I give you a word today that you may be one flesh, but in you is a will to do good and a will to do evil. Born at the same time, just like lambs are born in twins, we are born twain, flesh and spirit. Attribute of a lamb is innocent. Nobody has as their mascot for their football team or hockey team. We're the lamb. Woo! We know that the typology implies innocence. They're humble. My nephew raises sheep now, and we were out at the farm, and I just went, boo! They were gone. They're meek. They're gentle. In appearance, they're white, symbolic of purity. Their outer garment was white, such as a priest would wear when in, in intercession for the sins of a people. The little lamb's outer garment is white, as a bride would wear on her wedding day to indicate purity. He didn't say, behold, the sheep of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He said, lamb, indicating premature, not fully developed. And Jesus was a lamb that did not live a long life, but he lived a fulfilling life. Now, you and I understand and recognize the attributes of a little lamb. But the first century church, the Jews of the New Testament, understand lamb of God meant so much more. In Exodus 12, reveals the Jews were in Egypt's bondage. 
bondage a type of the world. You know, it didn't start out that way. They went down there and did pretty good. But over time, what was just a holding place became an indentured place of servitude. Sounds like a lot of people today. I'm going to live in the world and live it up for a while, and then I'll come back to God. Let me tell you what, oftentimes it doesn't end up like you started out. Over time, it became bondage. But God sent a deliverer. You know his name. It was Moses. Yet Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt, hardened his heart. So God sent ten plagues of them to turn, to say, turn my people loose. He sent pestilence such as lice, flies, fleas. He polluted the water. He put a frog in everywhere you step. Can you imagine? Couldn't take a step without stepping on a frog. Hailstones the size of basketballs. Darkness covered Egypt. Boils covered their bodies. But what lice and flies and fleas and polluted water and frogs and hail and darkness and boils could not do, the lamb did. God sent pestilence against the gods of Egypt, Ray the sun god. When God blackened out the sun of the sky, what good is your God doing you now? They worship the God of the Nile, but God polluted the Nile River where it was nothing but stench and death. What good is your God now? Could not allow themselves to acknowledge God, but when God said, get you a lamb, choose out a lamb, set it apart without spot or blemish, for those days leading up to the Passover, I want you to hand feed it. Relationship. I'm going to preach in just a minute. Hand fed. And then take its life. That one that you've gone day after day and look at its innocent little eyes and petted the little woolen coat upon it and saw and heard it bleed. And then you took his life and you took the blood and you applied it to the doorpost. Either you had the blood applied or your firstborn died. The blood of the Lamb set humanity. I'm trying to tell somebody what great cataclysmic events could not do. The Lamb of God brought deliverance for a people. My Bible says that same night when the blood was applied... They were liberated out of Egypt. I don't know what's got a hold of you. I don't know what has you bound. I don't know what's holding you back. But I've got a word for you today. You don't need a 10-step program. You don't have to go through a process. When you allow the blood of the Lamb to cover you, that same night, I'm talking about instant deliverance. I'm talking about healing for your body. I'm talking about overcoming sin and death. What brought death to so many brought life to those who had the blood of the Lamb. You know, they were commanded to commemorate this event, to remember it each year. At the same time, it became known as the Feast of the Passover. It was at this time of year Jesus was crucified. Jesus knew it. He told his disciples, For this cause came I into the world, that I must needs be offered. But also, that very day, each day, in the morning and in the evening, a high priest would make a sacrifice for sin. The high priest in the morning would sacrifice a little lamb to cover the sins of the people. In the evening time, the priest would sacrifice another lamb for the sins of the people. It was at the same time of day at evening that Jesus was crucified. Maybe can I give you some understanding? We're talking about Jewish Orthodox understanding that a lamb meant a whole lot more than just a little beautiful, fuzzy, woolen creature. The Jews knew without the lamb, 
there'd be no atonement for sin. And they celebrated annually God's deliverance. But daily, every morning, every evening, day after day, week after week, year after year, little innocent lambs were led to the slaughter all the day long, the word says. Just as the sun went down, also let us understand, I can't speak for you, but for me, I'm getting older. And that means I go to sleep. And I wake up a little bit after midnight thinking it's time to get up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can't sleep all night? Old timers talked about, I've been at the coffee house since four this morning. You say, why? Now I know why they can't sleep. I was young, I'm now old. Can't sleep. And in our culture, the new day starts at midnight. It goes from one day to the other. Okay? Some of us, we don't, we're not awake at midnight, and so the new day starts the next morning when we get up. In the Jewish culture, the day ended at the setting of the sun, and it was the new day. Can I give you a word today? At the end of the setting of the sun, as Jesus was crucified, hanging on a cross, he said, it is finished. Can I give you a word today? He is saying, it's a new day. Sounds like John knew what he was talking about, that Jesus was the great sacrifice for sin. I don't care what storm comes. I don't care what pestilence is coming against you. And even Moses himself could not save the people within himself, but the lamb did. What a morning and evening sacrifice day after day could not do. The lamb of God brought a new day. Salvation started with the lamb. Before they crossed the Red Sea, before they crossed the burning desert, before they reached the land of promise or even crossed the Jordan River, it started with the Lamb. For Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commended His love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Here we go. When I've not had as good a day as I want, and I've not been as good as I should be. But at the end of the bad day, starts a new day. And with the evening sacrifice, the lamb kept the sins from today from going into my tomorrow. Can I say it this way? Behold, that word from the Greek means to remember, to hang on to. Don't fail to remember or even surprise. Who's ever played peekaboo? I, I love little Layla Bell. And you can startle her. What does she do? You can still startle her. I see those little two-year-olds in there. She, and they crank that jack in the box and they know something's coming. Bing! Whoa! Surprise! Come out of nowhere. Shocked them. This word behold means it may not look like it to you, but... God is going to step in the middle of your situation. The Lamb of God who first loved you gave himself a ransom for you. Died that you may go free. And even when you get entangled again with sin, he makes continual intercession for you. Let's preach. When I come up short of my good deeds, behold the Lamb. When I know so much better than I'm doing, guess what? Don't look at me. Behold the Lamb. When the world holds me prisoner, I'm not looking to myself. Behold the Lamb. When sin holds me captive, I'm not looking to the power of positive thinking, but I get a remembrance. Behold the Lamb of God. When I see no way out of my situation, I don't give up. I just remember, behold the Lamb. Life and humanity did not catch God off guard. From the foundation of the world, he envisioned a Lamb led to the slaughter as a means to an end. To cause the wise to stumble and to set the captive free. Can I give you a word today? It is a simple message, but an effective message. We're looking for a lot of cliches and a lot of platitudes and a lot of other peripheral things when the simple message is... 
Behold the Lamb. Doesn't matter where I've been, Sister Josephine, because the blood of the Lamb is constantly making atonement for me. Don't matter what today was like, tomorrow's a new day because of the Lamb. I'm so glad for our exchange students. They smile and nod when the pastor talks to them. They're very kind. They understand most of what I'm saying. I'm so glad we've, we've got our German influence. I told her today that I was going to reference Germany, and she kind of smiled. I was reminded this week of an article about the building of a particular cathedral in Germany. The congregation had dwindled, but a very wealthy benefactor had deeded all of their possessions upon their death to the local church to build a beautiful cathedral. And so they commissioned artists of all kinds, and a sculptor was sent in to sculpt in the rock and marble different images that told the story related to Scripture of the family of this church. And this sculptor was on the tippy top of a scaffold, and he was so focused on his work that he stepped off the edge of a plank of the scaffold and he fell. The co-workers screamed in horror and they looked over the edge assuming that he was dead. And all of a sudden, they saw his body on the ground, but he began to shake the dust off and stand up. When he took a step away, they realized that a little community of sheep were eating the grass under the scaffold. And when the man fell, he fell on a little lamb that broke his fall. And it crushed it. And it killed it. But because of the lamb, the man was saved. I, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. February 9th was my 50th birthday. On that day, my brother sent me a text message. It was a picture of the first twin sheep that was born to his son Austin's lamb, a sheep. It was two little lambs that were born. And... He said, I named this one Carlos in honor of your birthday. I texted him back to the best and I went, bah. A few days later, I asked him, I said, I want you to set that little lamb aside. I want you to mark it so we'll know exactly which lamb. You know, all them lambs look alike try to recognize the voice, and they go, bah. They, they, they look just alike. I can't tell them apart. I said, mark it. He did. He said, brother, what you going to do? I said, tell you what, the Lord's giving me a word for the Pentecostals of Smyrna. And we begin to calculate that by the Lord's Supper evening, that we would be able to use the meat of this little lamb to feed you the Lord's Supper. Last Sunday, you saw some pictures a while ago. That little lamb right there, all your kids are petting it. Aren't they sweet? That same little lamb was our meal for the Lord's Supper. I let that word get out among some of you gossip. I looked every day, Brother Charles, for the PETA people. You know, the people for the ethical treatment of animals. I was looking for the people, PETA people with handcuffs come get me this week. I've had good, godly women not be able to look me in the eye this week. I'm going to call her out. Sister Caban couldn't even go in the kitchen Wednesday. She looked my direction once. She went, oh, Lord. Did I misquote you, Sister Caban? My wife, who gives half the bed to the cat, I have to hang on to the covers of dear life on one side. How could you do that? Born on my birthday, given my name, I ask him to set it aside. I want you to know today. <laughs> I had a lamb with my name on it. Before I acknowledged what a wretched sinner I was, there was a lamb that took on my name. 
that didn't say poor pitiful me, who didn't complain about the situation. For God knew if I was ever going to become like him, he'd have to become like me. And he became a man. I know he's coming back a second time as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But when he came the first time, John said, Behold the lamb that makes intercessions for the sins of the people. He didn't say, Not my will. He said, Thy will be done. Father, if it be possible, let this pass by me. But he said, Nevertheless, I got a boy born in Alabama in 67, who's going to be full of mischief, but he's going to have a day of revelation that he needs to repent of his sins. i got to have a lamb with his name on it, ordained from the foundation of the world. Now let me speak plainly. pastor gave his sermon title, read his verse, and our eyes began to glaze over. I've heard it all before. I began to go into autopilot. I'm coasting. Yay, God is a lamb. But think about that emotion you had at the revelation that it's an innocent lamb. Didn't do nothing wrong except be born on pastor's birthday. I don't think you're getting it. And every one of you had a birthday. And every one of you, before you even acknowledged you were sin, God had already put a lamb. <laughs> I'm glad that we don't abuse animals. I don't abuse animals. I'm glad that God has given us provision for the necessity of the flesh. And many animals lay down their lives that we may be fed. But can I give you a word today? When somebody says, Behold the Lamb of God. We better not let our eyes get glazed over. We better not go into autopilot. That same emotion that you felt for a little lamb that was killed that you might be fed. Let us come to the house of the Lord and say, I'm not what I need to be. I haven't mastered it yet. But when the devil comes against me, I remind him, behold the lamb. When the devil thinks he's got you, you tell him, don't look at me. Uh, take a look at the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. When the flesh says, I've got you bound, you got no choice but to give in to temptation. You square back your shoulders and you declare with everything good that's in you, behold, the lamb that's given me power over hell, given me power over the flesh. Come on, stand to your feet today. Anybody here got a past? Bunch of liars up in here. Two of us got a past. Anybody else got a past? Past failures? Anybody done stupid? <clears throat> Who in here knows that if you got what you deserve, you'd be dead, right? I can take you to the time and I can show you the place where I was participating in sin and willfully disobeying God, my pastor, and my parents. And I was almost snuffed out of this life, but because of the mercies of God. I'm telling you what, some of your darkest days can be your most defining moments. It was a dark situation. I wasn't where I was supposed to be, but in the midst of the storm, I saw the Lamb of God. He said, I've intervened on your behalf. Now what are you going to do with it? I've come to tell somebody that I got a past. But thanks be to the Lamb of God, my past no longer predicts my future. For daily, he stands in the Holy of Holies. I wish somebody would get a revelation. It's not based on you. It's based on the Lamb. It's not based on how you feel. It's based on the works of the Lamb today. Sister Beth's going to play something in just a second. You're thinking, how do I respond to a message like this? Number one, why don't you dial in that emotion that you've been squelching? You come in here. 
and you put a clamp on your emotions. You say, if I can just grip this seat, if I can just stare at the ceiling, if I can just occupy my mind with something else, but there's coming a day where you'll not be able to use any diversionary tactic to escape God's word in your life. As Beth begins to play, so I'm going to ask you a question today. Have you ever considered the lamb in your life? Have you ever considered the blood being applied? Pastor, how do I do that? Very simple. Very simple. 1 John 1 tells us, if we confess our sins, he is sure and just to forgive, comma, and cleanse us. Not because of us, but because of the Lamb. But pastor, I've, I've started and I've gone back and forth. We are overcomers, not of ourselves, but by the blood of the Lamb. Well, it's the word of our testimony. What is your testimony? I'm not what I used to be because I allowed the blood of the Lamb. Right. When I allowed the blood of the Lamb to be applied to my life, guess what? It changed my residence. It changed my identity. Yeah. It affected my yeah. outlook. So how do I respond to this? Ask yourself a question. Have I acknowledged the lamb in my life? Have I confessed? I'm afraid that God may reject me. If we confess, he is sure and just to forgive you. Those other voices that are telling you, you got time. Too many people here. I'll do it later. That is not God. For today is the day of salvation. I'm asking you a very specific question. She is fixing to sing. Do you think you can reach God even where you're sitting today? So why don't you get out of autopilot? Why don't you for just a moment begin to think about that little innocent lamb? It's only crime. It was born on my birthday. It's only flaw was that pastor found out and his life was taken that we might be fed. I'm asking you today, feel that innocent little lamb, feel that situation. Today, Jesus knew no sin, yet because of your sin, he put it on himself, and he made propitiation, or he became your substitute. Why would you make that lamb die in vain today? Why would you not take advantage of his sacrifice? Then right where you're standing, if situations have you bound, if addictions are pulling you back, if fear of your past is preventing you reaching your future, right where you're at, don't look around, look up. Come on, that's going to say, I want you to, I think your eternity is worth just a few minutes of evaluation. Would you just lift your hands and begin to say, Lord, today, everything that I am, everything that I'm not today, I'm yours.